One of the weirdest considerations I think of when watching older shows is whether they should be watched from a modern mindset, or if I should simply take a show for what it is during its time. When it comes to Chojin Sentai Jetman, I've only heard about it from passing comments such as, It's one of the best Sentai, it's super dark, it was going to be chosen before Jew Ranger for Power Rangers. I thought the suits looked a little weird, but other than that, I moved past those comments, not thinking much of them. If anything, I'd rather have watched the older Power Rangers connected season like Bioman, Die Ranger, and Kaka Ranger, which I did. So now we get to Jetman, the season that almost became the finale of Sentai itself. After Live Man, Sentai ratings began to drop with Turbo Ranger, and Five Man being the first time their ratings reached anywhere in the 6.0s. While those numbers would drop even harder in later seasons, this is half of what older ratings averaged. There were quite a few changes when it came to Jetman, but it was also more of the same that came before. Luckily, those changes were enough for the season to stand out, especially in their pre-2000s. For example, the motif was a little weird. We've had vehicles, the mystical, and even explosions themselves. But a whole team of birds was out there from the single red warriors we've had before. Though it makes sense, as we see an organization called Sky Force. They're not just gonna make a team called Fishman. Let's back up here and start with the opening theme. Despite not being on my countdown video, I think this theme is really good. Of course, it's catchy and once you hear that chorus, it'll be in your head for the rest of the day. The Sky Force has a spaceship, or a Earth ship, where we see two task force members, Rie and Ryu. By the way, I, I have to say this in like every video, but my pronunciations are off because uh, I'm American. All right, all right, I, I can't wait to see your comments about that. Anyway, they're chosen to become super-powered warriors in a secret project. It appears that they're a couple, so they're happy to join as long as they're together. Want to take a guess at who dies? The project begins, but something goes wrong. Radigat, a monster from the Viram dimension, attacks the Earthship. Rie, Ryu, and their commander attempt to escape, but a hole is blasted through the wall, causing Rie to fly out into the vastness of space. During the attack, the machine that gave Ryu powers releases Birdonic Waves to Earth. <laughs> Birdonic Waves. <sighs> Sometimes Sentai names are cheesier than the Power Ranger ones. Ryu wakes up in a base on Earth. He's in distress, but there's no time to grieve. The commander puts a changer on his wrist. Now they must search for their teammates. Their first member, Kaori. Kaori? Kaori. 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 I'm gonna say Kaori, okay? Okay. She joins easily since she had nothing else to do. Their next member, Raita, is more interested in tending to his crops. Luckily for the team, Vyra and Mooks destroy Raita's crops, so now he has a reason to fight. Ryu flies over with his mech and jumps down to transform. Simple, yet elegant with that old school feel, especially with that <laughs> you hear from the changer. Wow, that was weird. I don't think I should do that again. <laughs> Raita and Kaori are blasted off a cliff, so they transform too. I still think the suits are a little weird, but they're overall pretty cool. The odd part for me is that the bottoms look like they're wearing diapers on the outside like Superman. <laughs> then we get introduced to the Viram generals, Tran, Grey, and Maria. Want to take a guess who's important? The following episode has the team recruit the last two members, a high schooler named Akko and a jazz guy named, um, Guy. <laughs> hey look, there's the meme of Guy grabbing the mook's crotch. Then the episode after that is the team trying to get Guy to stop being a cool loner guy and join them permanently. I just noticed I wrote Guy twice, one's a name, one's the dude. <laughs> though his motive to join is because he has eyes on Kaori, even though she might have feelings towards Ryu. Wait. Dead girlfriend, disruption within allies, a love triangle. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Toshiki Inoue. He's a well-known writer in the tokusatsu genre, known for certain thematics, but he can write a good drama. Sometimes. A lot of the focus in the first half of Jetman is on the love triangle between Kaori, Guy, and Ryu. I say focus, though it's more sprinkled in throughout episodes, which was a good way to do it. As always, we have the Monster of the Week formula, but that's pushed back in favor of actual characters to care about. Aside from the usual, humans are awesome speeches. Older Sentai typically had team members call each other by their color. Here they feel a lot closer since they're always called by their, you know, actual names. Typically, as the filler formula happens, I tend to skip them when talking about the story. Having a love triangle can lead to the other two members being pushed to the side. And they do. 
However, not as much as you'd expect. Akko is shown to be a bit money hungry, but still good on the inside. At first, she didn't want to join the team unless she got paid, then later gave Kaori her money back. Kaori. Kaori. Jeez, oh my gosh, these names are gonna kill me. <laughs> in episode 8, Akko gets hit by a diamond with a bug in it. Don't ask, making her crazy. So Kaori tries to return her to normal by buying as much jewelry as possible. When that doesn't work, she just slaps Akko. It makes me think that Akko had that little bit of greed inside her, but the slap of love from her friend brought her back. Akko had another focus episode where she becomes a face of noodle cups due to a noodle monster. Don't ask. This had nothing to do with anything, I just thought it was funny. In episode 11, the Jetmen's personalities change, or rather, little bits of their deeper personalities come out. Ryu is a strong leader and would rather focus on the job at hand than go on a date with Kaori, but he's secretly a bit lazy. Guy is a gambler, he's a jazz man, a womanizer, but deep down, he wants to be a hero. Ah, dang it Inoue, you actually made me like your characters. <laughs> Fice had a decent cast, but when it comes to Jetman, uh, let's just say that this is gonna be one of those positive kinds of videos. <laughs> oh look, there's a commander shooting at Ryu. A story point comes along in episode 17 when Radiget feels something powerful arriving. An energy surge goes throughout the city. After Guy forces himself on Kaiori, we see a meteor hit Japan. A meteor housing Empress Juza, Viram Druler. Then she dies. During this and the next episode, Guy dies, and Radigate gets turned into a human. Then they return to normal. Obviously there's more to it than that, though all you need to know is that stakes are getting higher. Here's a fun fact, in episode 20, Guy's actor got injured on set but continued to do his scenes anyway, showing that he's pretty cool in real life too. And don't worry, he got checked out after. We go back to focusing on the love triangle in episode 22, Exploding Love. <sighs> Man, these title names. Kaori has strong feelings towards Ryu, though Guy still chases after her and calls her for a date. The next day, Akko and Raito are the ones who meet up with Guy. Ryu takes Kaori out, but not on a date. Well, unless you call going to a graveyard a date if you're not into that. Ryu shows her Rie's grave. He still thinks of Rie, even keeping a picture of her underneath his changer. Ouch. You could have let her off easy, not give her a sucker punch of the face. Guy consoles Kaori. She says that she should have fallen in love with Guy instead. Oh look, there's Dan from Jew Ranger, who's also named Dan. And he lifted up Akko's skirt. Moving on. During one fight, Maria, if you forgot she's one of the Viram generals, and Ryu get blasted away. They wake up together, except Maria is back to being Rie. What? Maria was Rie the whole time? Their actress is the same, so I couldn't tell. Rie doesn't remember anything that's happened, and Radigat takes her back. While all this is happening, the rest of the team have been fighting in their mech. Speaking of which, I didn't think I'd be a fan of their blocky look, but it grew on me pretty fast. The fight isn't going in their favor, but luckily, the commander has another mech ready. The Tetra Boy, which can turn into a cannon. That's awesome. The next story point comes when Tran, another of Viren's commanders, gets picked on for being a kid. Surprisingly enough, I enjoyed Tran's acting. He's been around since the beginning and I liked whenever he appeared on screen for the evil scheme of the week. When another of his plans fails, Tran runs away and grows into Jin from Die Ranger. Actually, he becomes Tranza, an older version of himself. Tranza says he can due to his anger because he can just do that apparently. The Viren generals had a lot of inner politics to become the number one leader, though Radigat seemed to do most of the scheming. But now Transa just sits on the throne with Radigat as an enraged rival. I'm only gonna bring up these following episodes because I know that I'll get a horde of comments if I don't. A new team called Neo Jetman takes over, they suck at their jobs, original Jetman returns, the Jetman also face dark versions of themselves for about 5 minutes, yay. For some reason, people thought that the female ninja team was important enough for me to talk about in Kaka Ranger, so I guess I won't take my chances here. Another team of rangers that don't do anything. Just like the flowery Genochi team. Trans is the main big bad for a good 10 episodes, where we reach episode 47, Emperor Trans's glory. He starts hunting the team down one by one, and it's actually kind of terrifying to see him casually walk towards them and turn them into stone. 
Radigat helps Rhea return the team and fight off Tranza. By the end, Radigat stabs Tranza, mocking him and leaving him for dead. Tranza is taken to a hospital, mentally broken for the rest of his life. Um, holy Oh hey, happy ending theme. Not really my favorite ending song, but it's calming, even if I don't exactly know what the lyrics are trying to say. We hit the home stretch from here on. With Transa gone, that leaves three more generals, except now it's Maria's turn. Ryu tries everything he can to bring Maria back. After kissing her, Rie goes back to her senses, but she stands next to Radigat, and Julia Caesars him. Radigat slashes back, leaving Rie dying. Her final wish is for Ryu to forget about her. Grey has had feelings for Maria, if you forgot he's another of the generals, as shown through the season, so he takes her in his arms and watches her take her last breath. Grey has tears in his eyes, and Ryu breaks down. Episode 50, The Fights to the Death. Ryu leaves a note behind saying that he's gonna fight Fire Him alone, the team go after him. However, Guy stays to fight Grey alone. Ryu has been fighting Radigat. As he shoots a laser towards Ryu, Kaori jumps in front of him to take the hit. Oh look, a broken helmet shot from Guy. Ryu takes Kaori to safety, where she tells him to remember Rie's final words. I also quickly want to bring up this cool transitioning shot of Kaori to Rie. Guy and Grey's fight ends. Grey has one last smoke and listens to Maria's piano playing. With the team together, they do their final roll call and fight Radigat in his true form. Episode 51, Spread Your Wings. Oh hey, I get it, they're birds. The Jetmen give everything they got and even the commander joins them in another mech. Ryu grabs hold of Radigat and tells Guy to stab through him. He hesitates, but it's their only option. Now Radigat is defeated. Ryu falls to the ground, showing us a quick helmetless shot and the team looks onto the sunset. Three years later. Akko, Raita, and the commander meet up with Kaori before her wedding begins. Kaori walks up the aisle where Ryu is waiting. Guy is running a bit late picking up flowers, though he witnesses a thief and chases after him. The thief then stabs Guy in the stomach. It'd be more interesting to say that the mugger was played by Black Condor suit actor, if this wasn't so sad to see. After the wedding, Ryu notices Guy sitting on a bench. Guy makes an excuse saying that he's just a little drunk. Their picture is taken. Guy takes one last smoke as Ryu nods to a figment of Rie. In the future, Raita gets together with his childhood friend. Ryu and Kaori have a son named Guy. Thanks, grown-ups in spandex and Shout Factory, for subbing this awesome series. Oh man, I've already said quite a bit and I still don't know where to start. Um, story thoughts. It's still simple enough, but the clashing between generals and within the team are what add flavor. The main thing to bring up is the love triangle between Kaori, Guy, and Ryu. First, Raito was added into that triangle for some reason, though he didn't change it in any way and was played more for humor. His reason for liking Kaori was because she encouraged him to fight when they got recruited. Again, it didn't mean anything to the overall drama. Raita actually had a love interest in his own focus episode. When I mentioned his childhood friend, that didn't come out of nowhere. We saw them together and admitting that they liked each other sort of early on. Which makes no sense on why Raita would like Kaori later in the season. Either way, Kaori is sure missing out cause Raita is so lovable. And I'm not just saying that because he breaks the mold of not being a skinny ranger ever since the first season in Go Ranger. Raita had another focus episode where he fights a tomato monster that he had nightmares about when he was young. Please ask about that. It's a great episode. <laughs> you can add Grey to the side of the triangle since he was in love with Maria. His feelings towards her weren't as off-putting as Raita. Grey slowly started falling in love after hearing Maria play piano, and it got brought up every once in a while. There was an episode where Tranza built a prototype robot called G2. It latched onto Grey almost like a baby, but Grey was more interested in taking care of Maria, so G2 tried to complete that objective and ended up dying. For one, it showed that these characters are worth caring about, even a one-off robot. For two, Grey is as much of a monster as the rest of the villains, but only caring about Maria. Grey's final battle with Guy is also amazing. 
The main love triangle moved forward a little every other episode, including the filler ones. I love Die Ranger's structure of continuing a new arc for each character being spread out, and I love Jetman's style of adding little bits of a continuous drama here and there. More importantly, I wouldn't have cared about the love triangle if I didn't care about the people involved, but I love them too. Ryu's in my top 5 favorite rangers now. His stoic attitude feels genuine, because he has shown more emotion than just a monotone or angry face. I get that he doesn't want his feelings to get in the way of fighting Byram, so he thinks about Rie on his own time. Even after she dies, he still has her picture under his morpher. Ryu gets his remembrance of Rie out before the final battle with Radigat, then he embraces what's left of Rie with Kaori. Speaking of which, Kaori is one of those characters where you'd think she's either just a damsel in love or can hold up on her own. I personally think she's a bit of both, but I'm mostly leaning towards her being a damsel. Kaori is able to carry her own weight during fights and involved herself to help the others. However, she also had the typical rich princess attitude early on, and after the second half, she didn't really contribute to anything unless Guy was part of it. I like Kaori. I wish she did just a bit more. <sighs> I also wish I could pronounce Kaori. Kaori? Kaori. Kaori. Ugh, people in the comments are gonna tell me anyway. Then there's Guy, the fan favorite who's also a bit of a creep. He forced a kiss onto Kaori and got her alone in an elevator for some personal things. This isn't something that I won't look over, but he does get better. Guy didn't want anything to do with the team at first, so it took an episode to get him to stay. He didn't feel like part of the team until about halfway where he gives a friendship speech after some events. He and Kaori got together later, but he knew something felt wrong. Ryu gave him tickets that were meant for Kaori and Ryu, so Guy got mad that Ryu would just ditch Kaori like that. Times have changed, so maybe Guy being an impulsive creep might have been seen as cute. So luckily, he gets better as the show goes on. I liked seeing Guy happy at the end, caring for his friends, and then I got sad that he died. It hurt more knowing that he absolutely did not need to have a death. It actually felt kind of out of place. Although, it was sweet that Ryu named his baby after Guy. My personal favorite member of the team is Ryu, but Guy will have a special place in my favorite Sentai heroes. All in all, it pains me to say that Toshiki Inui can actually write a pretty good drama if he tries. Before I move on, I just want to put out there that I've seen so many comments saying Jetman is one of the darkest seasons in Sentai. Really? It's not any darker than, let's say, children being used and sometimes killed for a witch's plan, or knowing that everything done to defeat monsters is all for nothing in an endless cycle, or the fact that very sad real-world events affected a couple seasons. Yeah, I guess Jetman is dark, but so is every other season. That's not to say that Jetman has no impact whatsoever, because I'll be the first to tell you that Guy's death is one of the saddest moments in Sentai. Oh yeah, I should bring up the commander. Uh, she's cool a couple times, especially when she piloted a mech at the end. She doesn't really mentor the team, more like points some at things to fight. She helped Akko this one time. Uh, yeah, I wish I had more to say about her. Now all that's left is Radigat, and Viram in general. Actually, the generals are great. They work together but one-up each other in order to become the next leader. Radigat is basically their leader at at least he acts like it. He also has that tiny bit of honor to defeat the Jetman himself without anyone like Tranza winning. I think Radigan might be one of my favorite villains, along with Viram being one of my favorite villain groups. Their designs are funny, yet pretty cool. I mean, you can't forget that noodle monster or the pumpkin monster. Before my final thoughts, I'd like to give a quick moment of silence for Masaki Tachi, Radigan's actor who passed away in December 2018. In the beginning, I was hoping that Jetman wouldn't be as good as others made it out to be. Maybe I'll be the odd one out and think that it's bad or just okay. But I gotta say, yes, Jetman is that good. I have fallen in love with the show since episode 1. The characters are among my favorites in Sentai, and the story is wonderful. Jetman is now in my top 5 favorite Sentai. Thanks for requesting this, Patty. Jetman is fantastic. With all that being said, join me next time when we see how Power Rangers got started with... <laughs> Alright, that's doing it a disservice. <clears throat> With all that being said, 
Join me next time when we awaken the dinosaurs with Kyoryu Sentai, Jew Ranger. <laughs> あいつ田舎者だったのか。